Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU unveils plans to clamp down on shadow banking Brussels' plan to control our army MEPs call for new EU military headquarters Ivan Rogers appointed Britain's ambassador to the EU and European Parliament members call for rewrite of defence priorities plus European Union continuing to struggle in fight to reduce VAT fraud. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The European Union is pushing for a more stable financial system by clamping down on shadow banking, the high finance sector that handles trillions of dollars but isn't bound by the same rules as banks. The Commission, the EU's executive arm, said on Wednesday that while investment vehicles such as money market funds or hedge funds are welcome because they provide extra sources of financing for companies and the economy, they can also pose serious threats to long-term financial stability. This article looks at the shadow banking sector and makes you raise an eyebrow or two when you realise that it holds an asset balance sheet estimated at 51 trillion euros. The European Parliament's majority group of MEPs called for a new headquarters that would direct major civilian and military crisis operations. The European People's Party said governments have to start building standby forces under Union Command, a move branded as the latest drift towards federalism by the UK Independence Party. Branded a drift? <laughs> this is not a drift. It is the end destination goal on the voyage of the good ship European Union. In his 2012 address, Mr Barroso stressed the importance of a federation of European states and that the European Union need more democracy and more integration. Friends, this is no drift. It is a deliberate mandate and we really are in the final moments of the creation of the United States of Europe. If you haven't had a chance to go and read Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 30 1048 in the 1972 et al. section of our website, then I strongly urge you to do so. The UK government has appointed Ivan Rogers, Prime Minister David Cameron's advisor on Europe and on global issues, as Britain's next permanent representative to the European Union. Rogers is to replace Sir John Cunliffe, who at the end of July was appointed Deputy Governor of the Bank of England. He is expected to take up his new post in November. So, a nice shiny new position. Well, well. The question is, have we appointed a representative of the people of Britain? Well, sadly, it appears not. Rogers previously served as the Principal Private Secretary to the Prime Minister, having been appointed in 2003, leaving the post in 2006. He was previously Director of Budget and Public Finances and Director of European Policy at HM Treasury. Chief of Staff to Sir Leon Britton, Vice President of the European Commission and Private Secretary to Kenneth Clark, Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> There's that Ken Clark fellow again. In the private sector, Rogers worked as head of the public sector industry group UK and Ireland at Barclays Capital from 2010 to 2011. And before this, he was head of the UK public sector group at Citigroup from 2006 to 2010. So really, he's a bankster europhile. That said, he should fit right in with the rest of the Bruswellian kleptocrats. A group of centre-right members of the European Parliament is calling for the European Union to define its security and defence priorities in the run-up to a key EU defence meeting in December. In a joint policy paper made public here on Tuesday, the European People's Party Group coordinator in the European Parliament's Subcommittee on Security and Defence, Michael Gala of Germany, demanded a comprehensive defence review with the aim of pooling key procurement projects by EU member states. Ooh, the pace to massage the public's perception of an EU military is quickening. More on this story 
later in the show. The European Union is continuing to struggle in its fight to reduce VAT fraud and its latest efforts were made in July, marking more than a decade of failed measures against carousel VAT fraud in particular. The participants in VAT fraud tend to be white-collar criminals and, for example, in 2011, a former policeman and two other men admitted conspiring to cheat HM Revenue and Customs out of £300 million. VAT fraud in Europe costs literally billions, if not trillions, and action has been awaited for quite a long time now, said Michael Noonan, Irish finance minister. The article goes on to highlight the proposals for measures to combat the issue of VAT and tax fraud. Of course, none will say a harmonised EU tax system, but that is what the end game is. Today in our video library. So, do you still believe that you are a subject of Britain? Do you still think that your national parliament governs you? Let me set the record straight. It's an illusion. You are a European citizen, governed by Europe, and subject and subordinate to its rules. The MPs you elected into Westminster are powerless to act outside of the EU treaty mandates and that makes them impotent to act on your behalf. But it is the EU Commission that makes the rules and regulations and yet you have no election rights over who gets those supreme power positions. Perhaps you are still sceptical. After all, we have our own Queen, our own currency and our own military, don't we? Well, in this video and supporting the key stories highlighting the potential new ruling in respect of the EU military, we see that indeed the EU military has the power and authority. It is the power arm of the European Union and it answers to the High Representative of the European Commission, currently Baroness Catherine Ashton. But don't take my word for it, check it out and see for yourself. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.